Mistress Justine Cross, and welcome to Dungeon West. Let me give you a little tour of my space and how much fun it is. So this is my bondage bed cage. It's fully padded on the bottom, so it's very comfortable for you to lie in while I'm up here teasing you, possibly hurting you. <laughs> this is a very unique custom bondage bed because it also does these cool things. And it also has these little pieces that come out. <laughs> a little Hitachi or vibrator or something in here and then this machine turns into a, a forced orgasm or tease and denial fucking machine. <laughs> As you can see, I have a wide variety of fun sandals and boots like PVC. They're all hanging up here. And then this, this is the key to a lock that goes on a CB6000. That's a chastity device. And one of my slaves is in 24 seven chastity. You'll hear more about that later. my other wardrobe closet devoted to all my latex and lingerie and leather. That's right, I have two full closets here dedicated to my fetish clothing. my new favorite lingerie that I just got. Here's some custom latex by Jane Doe in Los Angeles. And then I also have some beautiful corsets like this one by Stormy Leather, which is also based in Los Angeles. dressing up for my clients. There's so many different fetishes. Some people just like gloves, just like stockings, lingerie, latex, leather, and I find that very important. Although some people just want me to wear yoga pants, and that's also great. <laughs> this is my St. Andrew's cross, and I had one of my woodworking slaves customize the base for me with my logo for Dungeon West. show you some of the toys in my closet. So I had uh, someone come into my dungeon for the first time a couple weeks ago and they had never been into any kind of dungeon whatsoever and I was like oh here are all my toys and 
they were like, wow, I really love your labels. I'm more turned on by the labels than anything else. <laughs> so yes, I like being very organized and I certainly run a very clean and you know um, easy to access dungeon because I'm renting it out to other people all the time. But also for myself, I want to be able to find everything quickly. So I have things like vibrators up here, um, sort of safety supplies, washcloths and puppy pads, gloves, condoms, stuff like that. And then I have other things like uh, for cock and ball torture, CBT here, blindfolds, uh, collars, leashes, things like that. And I'm also very much into electro play. So I have all of that down here. Mm -hmm. And in addition, I have plenty of rope and leather restraints all in here. some more things in the closet. I call this the hurdy side. So we have things like single tails and dragon tails. And then I have floggers and leather paddles, wooden paddles, canes, crops, things like that. And then I have hoods and gas masks and such up here. Mm -hmm. My slave got me male mannequin heads for all this, the uh, masks and hoods I have here, which I thought was a very nice thing of him to do. He said, well, we couldn't have female heads. Like, that couldn't happen. I was like, well, of course not. <laughs> not as interesting to you, but certainly of interest to me and all the people who use my space, is all of my cleaning supplies here. <laughs> Part of the reason that I opened my own dungeon was because of how clean a space I wanted to use and play. And I've had people come in here, I remember one time a client came in and he, he took a break and he went to the bathroom and he came out and he was like, you know, like... This place is just really clean. I'm like, yeah, I know. Like, that's what I want it to be like. I have my slave come in here every week and he steam cleans the carpets, the curtains, the couches, everything. Everything is mopped, sanitized. It is a really fucking clean dungeon. Because it has to be clean if you want to have dirty fun. As a dominatrix, one of the things that people always want to know, well, what does your family think of me? Do your parents know? And the answer is yes, my parents do know. Um, not like everyone in my family, because that would be strange. Um, and they certainly don't know about like certain things that I do in my job because it wouldn't be appropriate to tell them. Um, but yeah, my father totally knows what I do. Actually, when I first got this dungeon and I moved into this space, he said, oh, well, can I come out and visit? And I said, well, yeah, but I need you to help me build an office and make me blueberry pancakes every morning. And he said, okay, I'll come out. So I get a kick out of telling people that, yes, my father has been to my dungeon and he helped build an office in here. Um, so that's nice. It's like nice being able to not keep that a secret from my parents and be able to tell them the normal adult like things I can talk about in my job. Like I can tell them that, well, hey, like I was just in Los Angeles Magazine and you know, they're happy for me and they're certainly loving the fact that I can come and visit them and I'm doing well. Do I have any rivals? Well, I guess I have a few people who think they're in competition with me. Another question that I get asked all the time is if I have sex with my clients. And the answer is no, I don't have sex with my clients. But the other answer is what sex? Um, you know, a lot of my friends, even though that they all know what I do and I'm very open about it, some of them still think that I have sex with my clients or I give them blowjobs or hand jobs, and that's just not true. But at the same time, I stop and wonder well, I'm, you know, someone's naked in a room and something sexual is happening, and even if that sexual practice isn't penis vagina sex, if I'm have if I have someone bent over and I'm caning them until he comes, like isn't that sex? Um, but in terms of for what I do, it's all BDSM. A typical day for me. Well, 
There are no typical days. Um, generally speaking, when I'm in Los Angeles, you know, I get up, I hit my snooze a million times, I let my cat out onto the balcony, I eat breakfast, I check my emails, I usually go to the gym, things like that. Depending on if I have a session, I'll be getting prepared for that. Some days I'm shooting in my dungeon, sometimes I'm doing interviews or other media type things, and sometimes I'm traveling. Um, I leave Los Angeles about once a month, and when I go out of town, I tend to be booked solid the entire time I'm in that city. I frequent Dallas and Houston, New Orleans, New York, so I'll work for a few days, and then I'll go out with my friends. And yes, I do have a social life, so I'm going out to non-BDSM, non-kink things a couple of times a week with my friends. What am I like if you were to meet me out on the street? Um, probably pretty much like a normal hot girl in Los Angeles. Um, you know, I tend to say that when you meet me as a dom, I tend to be very nice, and when you meet me in real life, I tend to be a real bitch. So, you know, do I do things like go grocery shopping? Uh, not really. I tend to make my slave do those things because I'd much rather be doing anything else. Um, do I clean my house? Uh, sometimes once in a while, but most of the time I make my slave do it because, as he likes to say, being able to do that for you gives me, brings me such joy so you can go out and have fun with your friends. So I really like <laughs> being able to go to a pool party and say, oh, clean this, clean that, do that, check, check, check. And he's like, oh, thank you, mistress. Um, so that's very fun for me. Um, what happens if someone screws up my order or doesn't do something right? Well, you know, I don't, I don't find value in being a bitch to someone um, just for fun. You know, I was at a restaurant with a group of my friends and the service was terrible and we couldn't stand it. And finally I called someone over and I said, well, I would like a glass of wine and these people would also want to be served. And where have you been all night long? And everyone just looked at me like, well, like I didn't, we've never seen you act like that before. And I just said, well, you know, you're not paying me to be a bitch. You know, you're not paying me to be mean to you. So why would I be mean to some unsuspecting person out on the street? I don't think that's fair and that's not the best use of my time or my... So how did I get started in this business? Well, it's a definite surprise to me. And if you told my, you know, if you told me 10 years ago that this is what I would be doing, I definitely wouldn't believe you. Um, I mean, I've certainly been interested in BDSM for a long time, and when I was in high school, one of my friends gave me this book by Sean and Penny called I Was a Teenage Dominatrix. And it was probably one of the first, um, if not one of definite, maybe even the first, BDSM memoir or you know, autobiography about becoming a dominatrix in like the early 90s in DC, and my friends were like, you should do this, like this would be great for you, and I was like, ha ha ha, whatever. And then like a few years later, I called you know my friends up and said, oh, that's actually what I'm doing now. So, um, but you know, I moved to Southern California after college and I have degrees in literature and psychology and a background in education and I worked in inner city schools and definitely thought that that's what I was going to do. I worked in you know corporate America for a few years, uh, the Southern California economy kept tanking and I kept getting laid off and finally I said, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to do this for a few years. I'm just going to stop, take a minute, figure out what I want to do, and just start doing this full time. I had always been doing it part time, working out of commercial houses here in LA. And then my career started to take off doing this full time. I certainly make a lot more money now than I did before. I mean, before I was working, I wouldn't get bonuses or raises, even though I was working my ass off at all these jobs and definitely doing a really good job for the company. Um, so now I work for myself and that ends up being much better. I only eat what I kill and that's working out a lot better for me. Um, would I recommend doing this if you're interested? No. <laughs> you know, people look at me and say, oh, well, like everything is so together for you. And, you know, but it's, I didn't roll out of bed and into a, like a pair of Louboutins and into this empire that I've created for myself. I always love to say that I work very hard to make money this easy. I do see new clients, but most of the people that I see are people that I've been seeing for years. I see them many times depending on their schedule. Sometimes I can see them once a week, sometimes it's once a month. Sometimes it might just be a couple times a year, and whether it's in Los Angeles or many of the places that I travel to, you know, those are the people that I enjoy seeing the most because I can, we can grow, we can have a continued relationship. 
Um, one of the clients that I see who's my regular slave, slave Jack, I've done a lot of things with him because he's been in the position to be able to do that. He's, you know, under my <laughs> advanced tutelage, he's lost a lot of weight, I've helped him improve his business, I've come over to his house and like thrown out all his ugly fat clothes, made him go shopping to get new things. Um, and these are the kind of clients that I enjoy seeing, like even when I go down in the south, uh, a lot of my clients very much enjoy southern fried food. Um, they are also, you know, on a long distance training program with me to lose weight. Um, I want people to take care of themselves and stay around for a long time. One of my clients that I saw recently was, you know, unfortunately very overweight. I told him, well, for every, you know, take a picture of yourself on the scale and for every pound that you lose, I will knock one dollar off of that session fee the next time I see you. But if you gain any weight, for every pound that you gain, it's going to be one more dollar for the mistress. Uh, what happens if my sink is stopped up? Get a slave to do it. Um, well, sometimes I can't get a slave to do it. So I remember one time I thought I saw a rodent <laughs> up in my, my rafters here. And so I called maintenance and they came over and I, you know, covered everything. And they were just in the front room with my dungeon, which has all these beautiful photographs of me and other ladies who use my studio. And, you know, one guy is crawling up on the ladder to like look for stuff and this other guy is smoking a cigarette and the guy up on the ladder is like, mew, 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 mew. I guess he was like trying to be a cat to call the rat out, I don't know. And then the other guy's like down there smoking and he's like, is this you? You're so beautiful, this is so nice. This is you, this is you too? Oh, so nice. <laughs> okay. So the way that I operate my dungeon is it is a rental only facility, which means that I have other doms as well as other lifestyle people and productions coming in to use my space. I don't book sessions for people, I don't take calls for people, people don't sit here on a staff. That does not happen here. Um, it's all on your own, you're completely independent. So that being said, I have a lovely group of ladies who come and use my space and sometimes we do hang out and go have girl time and you know, go get Korean spa or like, you know, go have like hot tub pool parties and stuff like that or just go out for drinks. This is Slave Jack. This is my, one of my most loyal slaves. He's the person who does all the cleaning for me at my dungeons, takes care of things when I'm out of town. So I figured he would be the best person to ask a few specific questions. The first being, what happens when you fuck up, Jack? Why don't you tell everyone about the most intense session you ever had with me when you fucked up? And be sure to tell them what happened and what it was that you did when you fucked up. Yes, mistress. Um, well, I'm kept in chastity by you 24 seven, which means that I can only um, masturbate or touch myself in your presence when you give me permission. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to be out of chastity one time for a doctor's appointment, and um, after the appointment uh, that night at home, um, I masturbated, and then we had a session a couple days after that, and you asked me, and I, and I always tell you the truth, um, and you asked me if I had masturbated, and I said yes, and you acted as if everything was fine, and we started our session, and I got to, to touch myself and come early in the session, and I thought, wow, this is really great, everything's fine. And then you ordered me to lay on the bed and um, tied me down and mercilessly uh, beat me and caned me, um, literally until I was crying. <laughs> and that was the most intense pain I've ever experienced, because as any guy can tell you, um, after you come, the pain changes significantly. It's significantly worse. And the uh, most amazing part of it was, um, it felt like real punishment, and you were laughing the whole time. <laughs> I was, wasn't I? Hmm. Why don't you tell them about what you enjoy about serving me? I'd love to do anything I can to make your life um, easier, uh, more fun for you, uh, more pleasant for you. I love taking care of the dungeon. Um, I love taking care of your house and running errands for you. Um, basically, um, anything I can do to make your life happier and easier and more pleasant is a real privilege for me. Now, Jack, you've known me for a long time and you've seen what I'm like in dungeon settings as well as not in dungeon settings. Why don't you tell people about what I'm like not in dungeon settings? Um, you're, a, you're a really great person. Um, you really are. Um, you have extremely high standards. 
Um, most people might say you were high maintenance. However, <laughs> I see that as a good thing because um, your standards are so high. And even outside of the dungeon, um, well, I mean, in the dungeon as well, you have high standards. But that just that overall attitude um, and belief that you want to be the best that you possibly can be carries over outside of the dungeon as well as inside. Good. Anything else you want to say about me, Jack? I've never been happier since I've been your slave. And how long have you been my slave? A little over three years. Oh, good job. How much weight have you lost? I've lost about 90 pounds. <laughs> How much more money have I made you? A lot. <laughs> How much have I taken? A lot. <laughs> and you couldn't be what? Happier. Good boy. <laughs>